Hey everybody, this is Dr. Jason Scapa coming to you from our office in Bellevue, Washington, where today we're going to talk about Candida albicans infection. So it's also yeast infection, fungal overgrowth, has a lot of different names. Obviously living in the Pacific Northwest, this is something we see a lot of given how wet and how dark it is most of the time during the year. Um, and you know, what is our body? It's wet and it's dark. And so um, a lot of people will, will have this issue whether they know it or or not. So in this video we're going to talk about some symptoms, uh, we're also going to talk about how you get it, and we're going to talk about different ways uh, that um, you can get it diagnosed, this problem. Um, so how do you get a, a candida infection? Um, well, it's all about ingesting spores, right? So if there's mold in your house, in, in, you know, on the windowsill, under the sink, in the, under the carpet, uh, if you travel and go to a hotel room where it's moldy, right, you, you're exposed. Um, but not everybody that's exposed will get sick. And so why is that? Well, it has to do with your immunity, but also some lifestyle factors. So eating a high sugar diet, low fiber diet um, will feed fungal overgrowth. Taking antibiotics, especially multiple rounds of antibiotics, wipes out the good flora, which throws off the microbiome in your body and the, that allows the candida to, to thrive at a higher level. Um, taking birth control, prednisone, estrogen therapy, messing with your hormone levels, that will also affect um, you know, the, the microbiome in your body. Um, obviously, if you have a lower immune system, if you have an a, a autoimmune issue, that kind of thing, you're gonna be more susceptible to, to getting a candida, uh, candida infection. Um, some ways that we found uh, that people get reinfected or that people do get infected they might not think of, might not be so obvious, would be from family members, lovers, and pets, actually. So, you know, sexual intercourse, kissing, um, even a dog licking you in the face, these can all be, if those people are infected, right, then it, you, you could get infected through that person. So we've often found that with patients, especially patients that are having trouble getting better or whatever, we end up testing their spouse or testing their kids or even testing their dog in some cases. Um, and then we end up, end up treating both people or multiple people and then they all kind of get better together. Um, so sometimes that's what it takes. If you're having trouble, maybe that's a good way to, you know, something else to look at. Um, so what are some symptoms? Obviously, you know, uh, candida, it, you know, you hear of thrush, which is kind of a white coating on the tongue and on different parts of the body, athlete's foot, um, yeast infections, females, um, you know, you hear, you've heard of those, I'm sure, before. So ones you might not have heard of would be brain fog, ADHD, um, some mild forms of depression, anxiety, um, and gastrointestinal problems is a big one, so bloating and, and you know, either diarrhea or constipation, um, inability to lose weight, um, just a lot of, like I said, bloating around the midsection, that, that's a really, that's a big one. Um, you know, also thyroid problems and that kind of thing, leaky gut, it can, all, it can just exacerbate all of those issues. So obviously all the symptoms I just mentioned are very vague, right? So if you've gone through different avenues of traditional treatment for those, those symptoms and it's not working, then you might look towards, you know, checking for a candida infection because in many cases you get rid of the candida and those, all those different symptoms will go away. So it's a, it's a good thing to, to check, um, especially if you've had trouble with some of those symptoms, and, you know, with, with more traditional treatment, focusing on just those areas. Um, fungal, fungal overgrowth candida problems, one of the main areas in the body that it affects is the liver because the, the, the breakdown of fungus, um, it, it creates, it's, it's acetyl benzene, and, sorry, acetyl, acetyl aldehyde and benzene. So these are toxic byproducts of breakdown of the fungus. And those all get filtered through our liver. Um, and so, you know, it becomes a problem and it's just this overload of these toxic byproducts going through our liver. Our liver does, does not like that. So over time, it can really affect liver markers and, and you know, it'll start showing up in blood tests and, and liver markers on the blood. Um, but also, uh, you know, our liver helps us to filter chemicals that we're exposed to on a daily basis. So if our liver is struggling just to keep up with the fungal byproducts, then it's not going to be effectively filtering out those chemicals that we're exposed to every day, um, which it normally does a fine, you know, fine job of getting rid of. So I, I often find that people that have a candida overgrowth problem will also have chemical sensitivity issues. Um, so instead of just running off and trying to treat the chemical sensitivities, you know, you start, a lot of times we'll start with the fungus, start with the candida issue, and then the chemical sensitivity issue will either get resolved on its own or it'll be really easy to, to, to fix later on after we've dealt with the candida issue. Um, so some traditional methods of diagnosing uh, candida, uh, so it's basically blood antibody levels for yeast, um, stool samples, checking for yeast and fungus and that kind of thing, and organic acid urine tests. Uh, the problem with these tests is that they're not very specific. 
So you can be, you can have the test, it can come back negative, but that does not mean that you do not have that problem. Um, you know, there's still a decent chance that you might. So um, they're not the best. We haven't found them to be the best use of patients' resources or time. Um, we've worked a lot with Dr. Michael Leibowitz and some other doctors who have developed protocols that can be used in-house to test for a lot of these things that we've found to be a lot more effective. Um, so we'll check for we'll check for different funguses in candida, but we also check for other other flora and microbiota in the body because they all they all it's kind of this dance that happens between our immune system and all of the, all of these different microbiota in our body and they, they kind of keep each other in check and we keep them in check and so when one gets really high it affects the level of the other so it's important to kind of check all of those together but we found that to be the best the best way but I mean a good a good history can go a long way I mean uh, you know just, just just even bringing up the possibility of your healthcare professional might pop that idea into their head to check check for that whereas before they might not have thought about that right they don't know necessarily that you went to vacation in Florida and you stayed in the moldy hotel room right they don't unless you bring that up they're not even going to think that so um, it helps sometimes to just throw it out there hey what do you think you think I could have a candida infection or, or a fungal overgrowth problem right just get kind of get the wheels rolling in your practitioner's head and, and that'll go a long way as well so Hope this was helpful for you guys. In the next video, we'll, we'll talk about treatment methods. It can be pretty nasty, pretty difficult to get rid of candida. So I'll go through some things that I've found to be helpful in our office um, with our patients. So uh, tune in next time, and thanks for listening.